Summer Selection, 1977, Exercise, Long Drag. Well, we've talked about having got this far. This is the end of Test Week, and we literally have two more days to go to find out if we make the cut. So it started off like this. First of all, we've reflected back onto what we've just done. Me and my mates are still there. And that's a great sign. We'd had a couple of beers the night before, but literally only a couple, because this was the early morning start. From memory, up somewhere around about three o'clock, two o'clock, I can't quite remember, breakfast, and then prepare yourself mentally and physically for what's ahead of you. You know through stories that it's about 42 miles, quite a long way having done what we've done in hospitable countryside. What was the weather going to be like? And so on and so on. However, I started preparing myself the day before, if I got through. So I was at breakfast with the lads, having a quick laugh and joke, because we knew we weren't going to be laughing and joking once we got on the hills. Certainly not till it was all over. So we had a brew, we had a chat, went back, finalised our stuff, finalised our packing, making sure the Bergens were absolutely spot on for weight. And of course, knowing where everything in your Bergen is a must. <clears throat> Belt kit, weapon, everything is ready to go. You don't want to be stopping once you've started an exercise to tie something up to stop. You don't want to. You want to keep going one foot in front of the other, in front of the other. A to B, B to C, C to D. A, a lot of effort, but you don't need things like tie and shoelaces and stuff. I'm telling you, something like that is a pisser. However, breakfast over, back down, my worst part of the course as far as I'm concerned, getting into those Bedfords, jump on the back. You haven't really got time to even close your eyes. Two hours in the back of a Bedford, out to the training area, out to the start point, which, if I remember rightly, was down at the reservoir, the bottom of Penny Fan. And there was more than one checkpoint to start. There's quite a lot of us still left. However, the distances were exactly the same. So it didn't actually make it, it didn't matter at all. So once you got there, you were allowed out. The instructors let people go individually. However, I do remember it being quite misty. Early morning mist, not unusual. Um, me thinking I know where I'm going to be heading for. Quick look at the map, map in my pocket, I'm off. However, as it states in my book, I didn't quite get it right to start with. I started going downhill <laughs> when I knew I should be going uphill. So I didn't quite, I, I couldn't see anybody because of the mist. I, I didn't have anybody come past me, which was a dead giveaway that maybe I was going the wrong way. Sure enough, I'd taken um, a, 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 a route off to the right of where I should have been. That took me down the hill. So I suppose I'd gone down there, I don't know, 10 minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes. It's surprised how quickly when you think you've done something wrong when that adrenaline comes through because you know this is timed, but you don't know what the time is. A rough guy, they said, under 20 hours, and you probably pass it. Think about that again. There was a lot of us on it. If there was any any twos and fro's about it, it could have gone either way. But it didn't. I turned around, corrected myself, and I started um, a nice easy jog. And then I felt a bit better once I started to catch up with a couple of the lads and pass them. And that way, I knew, even though I couldn't see, that I was going in the right direction as far as I was concerned, where the map should be taking me. Um, and I should have kept the map in my hand to start with. Mistake number one. 
However, as I say, the adrenaline rush is one thing, but once I started, I couldn't stop. And that was me going as fast as I could. Um, yep, uh, one or two guys passed me. I caught them up, passed them, and it went on like this. And of course, you were all going to the same way. And it wasn't till very much later on, you're talking about 20 hours nonstop, you're going to see people um, and there'll be different lads um, just digging in, everybody trying to get that same aim to get to the end in time. And that's what we did. So once you got to a checkpoint, you see the instructors smiling, ah, laying down in a sleeping bag having a cup of tea, a brew, never offering you one by the way. The weather, I remember, cleared up a bit. You'd never know what you're going to get in the Brecon Beacons. Um, but I remember it clearing up so you could at least see. And then it was head down over this open landscape. And when you try it, you're not allowed to use the, the B roads. You're not allowed to use um, tracks. You're normally going over the undulating ground and that is what screws up your feet. Trust me. And that's why it's difficult. You get caught on a track, you get booted. As simple as that. Um, no shortcuts. And then I remember some way into it, I came to Paddy he was OC of training wing, lovely guy, and uh, Rusty, where, where, where are you? Show me on the map where you are. It's another trick, but by the way, which you might expect. So you show him on the map where you are, uh, not far out normally, but actually they're looking to see if you've marked the map. And if they can find any markings on your map, who knows? You're not going to be top of the pops, that's for sure. The instructors, from the chief instructor through Lofty all the way down, tremendous guys. However, you screwed up, you were gone. And um, lucky enough, I never marked my map. But the secret was, that's what they were looking for. So I showed them where I was, then off I went. And now, it's surprising, once you get your well into your second breath, at that age, it is absolutely, it's enjoyable. Yes, it's hard work, it's enjoyable. And you feel, you can almost feel that the sense of what you've done, I don't feel I've lost any time, even though I did go the wrong way. I've seen enough people to convince myself um, as I've passed them, um, that things are going okay. And you get into that routine where you just keep going. Make sure you're not making a mistake. Keep an eye on the map. Um, you know, make sure when you get to the RVs that you have exactly the right weight in your Bergen. Okay? All this stuff about putting a stone in and throwing it away, it doesn't work. Uh, people have tried it, people have been caught and people have been booted. So it's all about self-discipline. However, one of the worst points is when I caught up with John Mack, my best mate. John had injured himself on the last day of the last test on test week. I couldn't stop. He knew that. I did say hello, obviously, and what you, what you done? There's nothing I could do for him. There was enough people coming up and down that track there. All I did was report it when I saw the first instructor. John, with a few others, were taken off. Um, they never made it the time limit in the end. It was an injury. However, it was an injury that didn't stop him because when he went straight on the next winter selection course, and passed it with flying colours, no injury. There's nothing you can do with an injury. So I got to the final RV and I thought I was doing well. And I could see I was upside a lad called Mick, an Anglian, caught Mick up. 
had a bit of a chat which we weren't allowed to we split up and then we went in to the rv point the last one and we thought great there's the bedford actually when we got there the bedford four tonner was a decoy <laughs> it wasn't actually the final rv it was some hundreds of yards up the road but it just shows you how your mind can go ah oh, and then you wait for the kick however what was another 500 yards or so on top of 20 odd mile you've 40 odd mile you've just done and i would say not a lot we got there we got checked in there you get your first brew of the day the instructors mark you in throw you on the back of a bedford as soon as that bedford is full that goes back to camp whilst they wait for the rest obviously by then john and them had come in and they'd, they'd gone back being picked up on the road however what a shame all that way through commandos all the way to the last day of the 1977 summer selection so lucky enough um when they got back yes i met up with john very very briefly um because we had our we had to carry on doing ours and get ready for our next phase which is jungle phase <coughs> i did get a beer with him yeah, he wasn't um you know a, a great guy however that alone <clears throat> i got through the other lads got through there was a, quite a few injuries john unfortunately didn't but he did make the next one straight